Across Canada, this has been a day of protest, counter-protest and even some confrontations over sex ed and LGBTQ rights. This is one of many demonstrations billed as the One Million March for Children, with supporters and opponents of the elimination of sexual orientation and gender identity lessons in schools facing off. In Ottawa, about a thousand people gathered on Parliament Hill. There, two people were arrested for displaying hateful material, while a third was arrested for causing a disturbance. The CBC's Megan Fitzpatrick has been covering one of today's largest events. She has more details from Toronto. The protest took place in Queen's Park, just across the street from the Ontario legislature. Earlier this morning, groups started gathering on the south lawn of the legislature, but then moved north to this park, where the two opposing groups essentially clashed. There was a heavily, heavy police presence here, t keeping the two groups apart, but at times there were some heated confrontations with people in their faces, yelling at each other, waving signs, uh, a scuffle or two that uh, police quickly broke up. Uh, people here voicing their opinions all around. We spoke to some parents who say they want uh, more parental rights in the education system. They say they want Ontario to follow the example of Saskatchewan and New Brunswick. Those provinces have recently introduced policies that require schools to inform parents if a child decides to use a different name or pronoun. Uh, now some here saying Ontario should have similar policies. Take a listen. Um, at the end of the day, we want to have a discussion. We want to establish a dialogue and say, listen, whatever is being taught to our kids, parents should have a right to know about that. It shouldn't take the strong arm of the government to have to come in and, and kind of force these things through. Uh, I, I think it's great that the education minister has made overtures towards that. And I would hope that uh, both sides can get together and, and recognize that parents should be the final arbiters of what your children are learning in the classroom. Okay. Education Minister Stephen Lecce did recently uh, express support for the idea of parents being aware and informed. But at this point, there's no indication that Ontario will impose a province-wide policy. Currently, school boards have their own policies. The Toronto District School Board, for example, their policy policy is that uh, parents would not be informed if a child makes that kind of decision without the child's consent. Again, some of the protesters here think that's wrong. They want that to change. Some are also saying they don't like the sex education curriculum in Ontario and they want it to either be changed or scrapped entirely. Other protesters here saying the opposite and they say they're here in solidarity with trans and queer kids. You know, we spend a lot of time just keeping children safe and loved and um, uh, accepting of themselves and um, to insinuate that we might actually be spending time indoctrinating them is absolutely ridiculous. You know, we don't have time for this. We just want our children to be, you know, safe, uh, loved, cared for and if there is a situation where a child is in danger because of their sexuality or because of their uh, gender identity, then it is our job under the Charter of Rights to um, keep them safe. Now, recently, Premier Doug Ford did say at a rally that teachers and school boards shouldn't indoctrinate children and that parents uh, do have rights. Uh, that woman saying she found that comment uh, very maddening. Uh, same reaction we heard from NDP MPP Kristen Wong Tam, who was also here earlier today. She said Doug Ford should apologize for making that kind of comment. We did get a statement from Education Minister Stephen Lecce in regard to today's protests. It reads, irrespective of your faith, heritage, sexual orientation, or color of skin, our government is firmly committed to the safety and well-being of all children in Ontario schools. It also says the government has a firm commitment to supporting the voices of parents. Megan Fitzpatrick, CBC News, Toronto. Winnipeg also had a protest in front of the Manitoba legislature. The CBC's Cameron McIntosh joins us now to show us more. So, Cam, what did it look like in Winnipeg today? Well, Andrew, it actually started off early this morning down at the Forks near downtown Winnipeg, where many people gathered from different faiths, different backgrounds, with a common concern over the teaching of sexuality in schools and exposure to sexuality in schools. That demonstration moved to the Manitoba legislature just a few blocks away down Broadway Avenue, many people marching down that 
that street chanting, leave our kids alone. When they got to the legislature, they were met by a counter protest, many people from the LGBTQ community. And this is where it really got tense. Uh, at times people getting into each other's faces, a lot of kind of arguing and just real conflict. Uh, now, at one point, it got to be a few hundred people on each side. As far as we can tell, though, no physical violence and no one got hurt before it all kind of broke up. But definitely and certainly not a very constructive conversation. And meanwhile, Cam, this is happening with a provincial election campaign going on. So has any of this been an issue uh, in the campaign? To a degree. Um, the governing Progressive Conservative Party and their leader, Heather Stephenson, the current premier have been talking about parental rights and the need to update policies in schools in the digital age. Last time this was done in Manitoba was about 30 years ago. So what does that mean? The premier has talked about bullying and behavioral changes, but she hasn't gone as far as to say that the uh, that the Progressive Conservative Party, if re-elected, would bring in policies similar to Saskatchewan and New Brunswick, where parents would be notified if a child changed their pronouns or changed their name in school. They're not going that far. They're saying that they are looking to consult with the community to see where people are comfortable. In the meantime, some of the other party leaders are accusing the Progressive Conservatives here of trying to shore up votes by stoking fears. As for today, when both Premier Heather Stephenson, the Progressive Conservative Party leader, and her main opponent, the NDP leader, Wab Canoe, were asked about the protests. They both said that they didn't even know that they were happening, notwithstanding the fact that it happened right on the front lawn of the legislature. Hmm. Okay. Uh, Cam, thank you. The CBC's Cameron McIntosh live in Winnipeg. Further west, demonstrations are going are on, are ongoing. Protests against school curriculum and policies are taking place everywhere from Prince George to Vancouver. And that's where we find the CBC Sarah Galashian. So Sarah, bring us up to speed on what's been happening where you are. Well, Andrew, so just in the last hour, we've seen protesters on both sides of this issue starting to gather uh, at Robson Square, which is an area in downtown Vancouver where we would normally and, and see protests uh, take place. And what we are seeing, early pictures showing uh, protesters, as I say, on both sides of this, those who are against a curriculum, a school curriculum that includes sexual orientation and gender identity, and those who are in support of it, uh, and in support of the inclusivity it would provide, and as well, uh, safety for those children who have uh, those kinds of questions. Uh, many of the rallies, though, uh, in British Columbia started much earlier, as of 9 a.m. this morning. And in fact, in the city of Vancouver, outside City Hall, there was a small number who gathered uh, from the, the placards that they were carrying. It was pretty clear that they were primarily uh, those who were supporting the, the uh, Million March for Kids, uh, anti uh, this kind of uh, sexual orientation curriculum being uh, shared in schools. There was a response from the mayor who posted a picture in response on Twitter, and it was simply a, a rainbow flag hanging from his window saying this is his view of events today. He also issued a statement that reads in part, we can never allow ourselves to let hate win the day. So to all 2S LGBTQI plus individuals know this, we see you, we value you, you are important and we stand with you. Other protests uh, we have seen tape come into the newsroom from uh, Kamloops, uh, another one where there was a, hun a few hundred uh, who gathered. Uh, from our reporters on the ground, we understand uh, primarily those were in support of uh, the kind of curriculum in schools, uh, but conversely to the north, uh, Prince George outside of City Hall there, uh, the placards uh, being carried by individuals there uh, would certainly appear to be more in support in numbers of the, the million march for children side of this, uh, this issue. Um, both sides of this issue, as I say, gathering right now in downtown Vancouver, we do have cameras there, images coming back to uh, the newsroom, and as they do, we will bring them to you throughout the day. Andrew? And what about other western provinces? What's going on there? Uh, so uh, we have uh, Alberta certainly been seeing protests uh, happening uh, in the area of uh, Calgary and in Edmonton. Sizable protests in Edmonton happening outside the Teachers uh, Association building. And on that building, uh, administrators with the, inside the building hanging a large rainbow flag on the building indicating uh, where they stand on this issue and the side of this that they are supportive of. But uh, on either side of the street, uh, the, the, the crowds were loud. Uh, you can hear on the tape they are... You uh, yelling back and forth uh, their positions, but it is uh, a, a largely peaceful event as the Premier uh, had 
urged to be issuing a statement to that effect, but not taking sides on the issue. To that, there is uh, one interesting clip of a, a protester that I want to play for you. This is somebody who showed up in support of the sexual orientation curriculum, uh, but a very measured comment from him that I think is worth listening to. I think everyone's here for the same reason. Everyone cares about each other. Everyone, I don't doubt that people on the other side are worried about something. But it's important to be informed to know what's happening, to know that kids need to grow up in a safe place, have parents that support them. I'll finish just by saying that there are also hundreds gathering in, in various areas uh, throughout Saskatchewan, in uh, Saskatoon, and in Regina, outside the legislature. Uh, and it is an added dimension to the province of Saskatchewan because protests there um, are also including, in some cases, uh, feelings about the new policy that is now uh, being as day one for that policy in schools throughout the province. Uh, the, the Teachers associations uh, figuring out how to implement that policy, but essentially similar to that of what we see in New Brunswick, where uh, teachers require parental permission before being able to use the, the preferred pronouns or names of the individual students. Andrew? Sarah, thank you. The CBC Sarah Galashin.